for us, Councilor Liang. Thank you. I, well, I just want to come back um, to what I talked about a little bit earlier on that line item. And my colleagues asked some great questions that I think informed me a little bit more, too, on the funding. So, um, I guess, through you, Mr. Chairman, to the mayor's representative, you're saying that before the end of this year 17, which is the end of June, so long as we get the list together, we get the RFP out, we get the ball on that, these funds can be appropriate for this year's use, correct? Okay. Okay, um, do we have an idea of when we would possibly get an update on that? I, mean, I, I don't want to send that one to take the order card. I can certainly provide an update for the next couple of days as to how long it will take. Uh, if it's possible, if it's not possible. Okay. Um, Generally speaking, the procedure would be on, on that side of the contract to put the advertisement in the central register and advertise in the local paper for a minimum of two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then there's at least a week, usually two weeks, when people will pick up the bids, put their prices together, and then submit their price. And then at that point, the bids would be evaluated, and then a contract put out, even if it's rushed, you know, at that point, we're about at five weeks, which is, I think, about what we have left in the fiscal year. And that sounds like a best case scenario, but we don't even have to get to that end point before this, these, again, these monies can be appropriate. It's just a matter of getting that advertising out to show the first step in that process that counts towards that, correct? Um, I believe the purchase order has to be cut. Okay. But I'm, I'm, again, I'm not sure. And that let's say that, again, best case scenario that does get done. What do you think, um, in all honesty, your, your department's capacity to then, you know, go ahead and execute that? Do you think that you guys would be able to manage that in you know, the remaining months? Or even, let's say, fiscal year 18, you have the funds there, you have the available. What do you think is your department's capability then to get it done in the next fiscal year? Well, we wouldn't be doing any of it other than managing the list, dealing with the contractor, marking out, and then supervising the actual installation. We would not be planting the trees ourselves. We so just, whoever submits it, they can the ones doing that's it. Correct. They can on the ground. Okay. That's okay. correct. Okay, so the, the management on your end of it in your department is just getting those lists together and overseeing it to make sure that the list sort of is a punch list, right? They all get completed. Yes. Sure. Right. And how many trees roughly did I, I'm sorry if you mentioned this earlier or answered it earlier. How many trees about would, would hundred thousand dollars cover? Right now, the tree, the tree size that we most commonly plant, which is two to two and a half inches in diameter down near the ground, six inches above the ground, uh, are about $500 a tree. 500, maybe 550, depending on the variety. Does that include the labor cost as well? Yes. Yep. So it's $500 in? Yep. That's the tree, the planting, the mulch stakes, and a guarantee. And again, we don't have that list as of yet, so you don't know if it's going to be you know, 2 or 10 or 15. We don't have a number yet, right? I, I don't know it. Um, so you know when you might have to get that number to us? Um, almost immediately, as soon as we need to check with the office and see where that list is at. that we're looking at for this past fiscal year. We don't know what it looks like moving forward. As far as capacity goes, I'm glad that that's out of your department. Not to say you can't handle it, but you know, you're gonna put it out to bid and somebody else is going to um, to execute the work. But just to have a number and have an idea to see, are we meeting that number? Are we over, are we under? It'd be helpful if we had a number in front of us. I think the other thing that I would say is that looking at the history of this line item, we used to have $300,000. In, in the tree planting item. And then things got tight. It went down to 150, it went down to 100. It got cut completely for at least two years, I believe. Yeah, I it's been it's zero. Year, mm -hmm. Last year it went back up to 100. It's at 100 again, primarily because we're level funded. 
So I, I think that historically we can look at the amount of money that's been spent on new trees and the number of trees which I could, you know, we could look at the tree log and say, well, we took down this many. Um, that usually we guess, that, and, and I will say it's a guess, mm -hmm. that we're taking down somewhere between 300 and 350 trees a year. So that in, in the past, since the $300,000 year, we've always felt that we've been going behind on, on new trees. Trees cut down versus trees planted. And is the that the feeling, funding, or is it? Excuse like, me. Oh, sorry, is that, do you feel like you're behind because of the funding, or do you feel you're behind because of the, Be, because of because of right because of funding? We, it, it's, it's to some extent a gut feeling is that the tree inventory in the city is decreasing, and you know the only way we would have to quantify that is to look at how many we've taken down and then go back through our history and see how many we've planted. But it's been sketchy, catches, catch can since about six years ago. Okay, well again, it's my thought on this that I think it'd be helpful for both of us if we can get a list of all the trees that we're looking at or number of properties, just to have a number in front of us to say, okay, sure. this is what we're looking at, this is what we need to put up for bid, and this is the potential cost associated with it. Not just the, you know, again, to get an understanding of this last fiscal year, but the, um, the appropriation amount in front of us for next fiscal year. So if we could uh, just put this on hold and get those numbers and bring it back in front of us. Making a motion to put the budget on hold, correct? Mm -hmm. Pending additional uh, <coughs> backup from the park department? Yes, please. Correct? So that would, there's a motion on the floor to move approval on the budget. Um, your motion, we're going to go take a roll on that, seeing how that goes. Um, you want to say something? Yes. Yeah, it's always been customary again that the parliamentary procedure engaged with a finance committee is that you know a motion to cut doesn't require a second, a motion to approve doesn't require a second. But one of the, the things that's always been present is when a councillor requests to hold that's generally been honored because it's based on the need for additional information to consider for their vote. So uh, again, I'm not certain that we need to vote, we should be voting on, uh, again, a, a, a request to hold on a particular item. I will uh, defer to your... Basically, it should be, again, just unanimous consent of the body here to place something on hold. Because again, if we start, if I want the next time I want some information, the majority doesn't. Um, you know, it's really not appropriate in a committee than a finance committee to function in such a manner. Sure, understood. I can, uh, I can appreciate that. I guess, Paul, the next time that we're going to reconvene is the 24th of October. Does that give you enough time to produce the data that oh, she gives me? Yeah, right. Sorry, I was going to say, did Christine just have to call the office? we're able to move through it, I have no problem with you coming back. But if for some reason that doesn't work out, we're back in here on the 24th, so um, mm -hmm. there it is. So thank you. We'll, we'll chat with you eventually today. All right, next, uh, next item on the agenda is engineering, and that can be found on page 49, Commissioner Grimoff.
afternoon, Commissioner. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Uh, and President, members of the Council, uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, be here this afternoon. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk about public works uh, whenever I have the, the occasion. Uh, before I begin, I just want to, on behalf uh, of the Public Works Department, uh, to thank uh, Councilor Joe Penn, who is the Chairman of the Public Works Committee, uh, not only now, but in the past as well. Uh, we understand that he'll be leaving the City Council at the end of this year. And, both well, personally and professionally, I want to thank Joe for his exceptional advocacy on behalf of the working man and woman uh, of the city and his uh, steadfast support of the Department of Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Madam Chair, um, I'm going to ask you to uh, come forward and uh, share your thoughts with us. As I indicated, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, we've had a great 2016. I know that uh, you've all read in the Quincy Sun that. Uh, we were awarded uh, a stormwater management award from a number of uh, New England uh, stormwater organizations, and it's, uh, it was presented. It, it will be presented uh, by the New England Stormwater Management Award, presented by the New England uh, Stormwater Collaborative. Uh, that's a group that consists of New England Water Works Association, New England Chapter of American Public Works Association and the New England <coughs> Water Environment Association. And that's mainly because of the work uh, of the uh, Public Works Department, uh, Theodore Hall, John Sullivan, and a variety of others in, in developing the clean water is everybody's business. So uh, those of you who use the bumper stickers, if you'd like to put one of these on your vehicle, that would be great, all right? It's, it's our way of educating the public that our waterways are treasured uh, assets. Uh, we need to protect them, and it's everyone's business to do that. And part of the award was the development of our calendar, which not only informs the public relative to the stormwater ideas and other ideas, uh, but it, it allows the public to have uh, week to week, day by day, week to week, month to month, season by season, an indication as to 98% accuracy, because it depends on what the what things may change. Uh, so that, and our info letter, which we mail uh, twice a year to about 40,000 folks. So uh, it's an outreach to the currency, uh, the public works going to every store and doorstep uh, within the city, uh, advocating uh, on behalf of the community. This past week, we were honored uh, for the sixth consecutive time. This is a different re recognition. This is by the Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, presented to the Quincy Water Department for outstanding performance and achievement in the year 2016. And that was uh, supported as well by a proclamation from uh, Governor Well. And in a few weeks, the Clean Water Club Organization, which is a nationwide organization, uh, but also has a chapter within Massachusetts, and they'll be recognizing us for, ex for excellence in 2016 as well. Uh, I'm not going to do a lot of presenting. We're going to leave that up to, to the folks who are uh, in, in front of you. Uh, Paul Delgado, who's a manager of the water department, will be doing water. Uh, David Hall, the compliance manager, will be doing uh, uh, sewer drain. Uh, manager Mike Norton will be doing highway. Superintendent so Venable will be doing uh, ice control, snow management. And uh, John Sullivan will be doing waste uh, management. And, and my sense is, uh, during their presentations, they'll be able to, if not specifically, indicate to you what's happening in their respective departments. But give, give you a sense of uh, the movement of, of this department uh, with respect to some of the comments by Council Council <coughs> and others, that uh, we are still uh, have a degree of reactiveness. Uh, obviously, that's part of the mission of public works. Uh, someone has an event at their home or, or on their street, uh, that's an emergency or something that uh, has newly been uncovered, uh, we have a consistent obligation to respond to that as soon as we can. So we have a goal of, of, of responding to all of requests within a 24 or 48 hour period. Probably something like that with proactivity. We do with our sidewalks and we do with, with other aspects of public works. So the whole fundamental mission of the department providing a service, uh, we'd like to think that we're gravitating 
uh, towards a, a combination of proactiveness as well as a very responsible and effective um, uh, reactiveness as well. The other idea that I think I'm hoping you're to find in these presentations is the whole idea that the public sector can do it alone. Uh, we rely on our private partners not only to do those things that we are not able to do, uh, but also to do those things in partnership with us uh, to make our job more effective. So, Mike Norton will indicate to you that uh, for the first time in the history of at least one since I've been here, uh, and I include my, my time as a city councilor. Um, as you know, we went down this journey a couple of years ago of, of highlighting sidewalk repairs, which, interesting enough, when I listen to you folks, <coughs> and you talk about the complaints you get, uh, no one seems to talk about sidewalks anymore. But in my day, Council Finn's day, uh, water bill escalating up, down, the roller coaster bills were, were a pretty big issue and sidewalk repairs going into a black hole that are being heard again was a significant issue for those of us who like to knock on doors, talk to folks, and find out what they're talking about. So I feel very proud of the fact that that is no longer an issue. And it's no longer an issue because people get letters about the, how they analyze, when they can expect to get repaired, and the reaction follow through with the repair. Now for the past couple of weeks trying to get through that backlog, we've had to, unfortunately, have a cutoff time. We're hoping that with this, again, being proactive, reducing the backlog, and having a public-private uh, uh, working relationship with the two internal 1139 crews that we have, coupled with a private contractor, the money's in this budget, and that's why I'm talking about it a bit. Uh, we're hoping, even though it's an election year, that new folks can be out there knocking on doors and piling up those requests. We're actually hoping to be able to fulfill uh, our goal, which is if a person makes the request uh, during the construction season, uh, our commitment is to repair that within that same year. What we tell people right now, or before this uh, year, uh, if they call it in, if it's rated as a trip hazard, we'll catch you within the next year. Uh, but with all that we're talking about, I feel very uh, confident we'll be able to fill that uh, with, within this year. Uh, that's a huge uh, effort uh, by this department. <coughs> a lot of credit, much credit, obviously, to the managers who put this together, the engineering department that <coughs> has managed uh, this, uh, Superintendent Hunterville, Mike Norton, the engineers who work on this, uh, the 1139 crew, the UPA who do all the work uh, with respect to the college and, and the supervisory union. Uh, I feel very good about uh, where the Department of Works uh, was, uh, has been, and, and, and where, it, where it's going. So we're very optimistic, very upbeat. Uh, there's not a whole lot new with this budget, uh, unfortunately for us. Probably fortunately uh, for you folks, you don't have uh, a lot, hopefully, to, uh, uh, to, to cut here. And every single penny uh, is important to us, and it will, will be spent uh, for those purposes to uh, promote. Public work. So, uh, I'm going to bring up John Sullivan first to talk about uh, waste management. Just a Mr. Baum, would you think of, if I could, one of the commissioners here before he retreats? I'm sorry? Um, I just a couple of uh, comments on your comments, your opening remarks. Um, but, uh, I was going to commend you before you commend yourself on the sidewalks. Uh, <laughs> but you're exactly right. You're, you're exactly right on. Um, you know that the commission reminds us that the vote. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that right? No, I get that. Uh, no, but, I, I, but I've, I've said this almost every year. I mean, you're, you're really moving. You, unlike what's happened in most of the departments and what we're talking about today, the long-term vision is to get proactive and looking at and just what you saw. We just went, what I went through in the back of the book with uh, Mr. Uh, France about, well, what would it take to get to a place where we were even and we're able to handle things as they come in. And in this, I've had the pleasure in the almost eight years I've been on the council, seven years of which I think about you've been the commissioner. It's gone in the sidewalk six. program. It's got six years. It's gone from it seems like something. It seems like something yeah. um, it's gone from a place where there was a list. And I don't know if you hear what Mr. Coffin is here and said they have three thousand requests, they were able to get to sixteen hundred this year, there's fourteen hundred they haven't got. It. 
I feel like that's the place we were at six years ago with the sidewalks. We're not there anymore. The sidewalk list is clear, and then we start over. I mean, that is ideal. That is the way we want, from my perspective, that is the way I want all the departments for the tree requests. Um, it would be wonderful, wonderful, if there was a day we could get there with road paving requests. I mean, it's obviously a bigger ticket item, but that's the way I think uh, is a best practice for a municipality to be addressing infrastructure needs. Um, the policy that you've implemented there with the si sidewalks, just I can't commend you enough. It's, it's phenomenal. Uh, every once in a while, I'll get a call now about a sidewalk, and I go, you know, they'll say, oh, my sidewalk's pulling apart. I go, well, how can that be? We're on top of the sidewalks. That means you haven't told us. I said, so here we go. We're going to call into the sidewalk line. I'm going to email the commissioner. You're going to call the DPW. We're going to get your sidewalk reviewed, and, with, and if it meets the grade to be uh, uh, fixed, it's going to get done within a year. It might even get done this year, depending on the cutoff. And, and I don't get the call backs, like what, what Council of the Forest was talking about with the trees. We put in a tree request, and then six months later, the person emails me and says, so hey, what's going on with uh, that tree? So I, I, did you not hear from anyone? You know, and another thing is you send out the, the letters, so people know what the, what the sidewalk was graded. They know whether or not it's going to get done, or whether or not it doesn't meet the, um, uh, the standards now, but it'll be reviewed again in the future. So now the resident knows exactly what's going on. They know that the government's being responsive. We've, we've, we've taken their concerns, we've looked at it, and if we can fix it, we fix it. Uh, and if not, we'll look at it again to see if it can be fixed later on. With the trees, it's that black hole. I mean, it goes in, and then, and then it's incumbent upon us to try and figure out, well, did anyone even go out there and look at it? Was there a resolution? Is it on a list to get done? Is it not? And then we have to, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a big circular exercise where the bottom line is the constituents not being served, ideally, uh, and the work isn't getting done uh, in, a, in a straightforward and reasonable amount of time, which I, I wish we could implement what you've done, this policy with the sidewalks across a broad spectrum of uh, constituent services uh, and infrastructure improvements in the city. So I, we really, I think it's one of the few things actually in the city that we are proactive about. I mean, to some degree it's reactive because it has to get called in. But I know you guys are out there when you're looking at streets, uh, you're looking at the sidewalks too, and it's, it's not just the ones that are getting complained about or calls about that you're replacing. You're replacing the ones as you, as you see them. So I think that is proactive. I really think it's one of the few things in the city that is currently operating in a proactive way. Um, and it's just, you know, it's, um, it's a testament to you and the policies you've put in place and the folks that you have working for you. And I, and I think we have to remember um, that there was a significant investment by the council and the mayor's commitment to expend those money to get to a point where we work well. Uh, and, and I refer back to the conversation with Mr. Franz that. You know, he said $200,000 a year for five years, that get us to this place. Well, at, at a certain point, you made a determination, I don't know what the number was or the, the, the timeline was, and you came to this body and said, this is what we need to do contractually, we need to contract this out, and then you <coughs> fine-tuned that as you went year after year, said, I think we can get more done if we have our guys rip up the sidewalks, and we use the contractors to, to come around and redo them. There'll be an inconvenience for people, because maybe the sidewalk will be open for a a week longer than it normally is, but we can get you know 25 percent more, 10 percent more sidewalks done, um, and it's it's just worked uh, it's worked tremendously well. Um, so kudos for that. Um, and then also uh, as an opening remarks, you were talking about the awards and congratulations. Uh, did you mean to say Governor Wells? <laughs> yeah. So I was gonna say Governor Wells giving you yeah Governor Wells giving you awards. That may have been when you were on the school committee. He's out and about, so I don't know if maybe Governor Wells is popping by and gets some leftover awards. He's just giving out. That card is big. So, uh, but just to comment, to, not, not to leave a false in, in impression. The, the movement towards the black hole to where we are, uh, the, that, that was an important step back in the, uh, the DPW crews removed the MSC uh, and the private uh, uh, contractor repair. We're now beyond that. So we have two separate uh, DPW crews uh, that, and again, it's a holistic approach, and I'm, I don't want to take too much uh, away from Mike's presentation, but uh, 
every piece is part of the puzzle that gets us to the end result. So it does not take us so long to sweep because of the investment by the mayor and his counts with additional sweepers. It takes us a month and a half in the spring, two months in the summer, uh, in the fall. That's three and a half months. We're not Florida. We have a limited amount of construction time. So as you noticed, we pushed back spring to six days. Six days. And we pushed back the fall to two weeks, which frees up an extra two months of construction. So right now, we have private crews uh, have been done with sidewalk repairs. We're not doing the bifurcated uh, removal and replace. Uh, they had a list of sidewalks, mainly concrete. They're done. Those folks got letters. They're happy. The sidewalk surveys will go out. That's another thing we do. We, we send a survey out saying, how do we do? And if anybody did what we get back, we've changed our system. It's funny, I've never gotten a survey from you asking me how do we do. Do we ever do a sidewalk? No. But if we did your sidewalk, you would get a, 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 a So, uh, so the private work that was on the list is, has been done. The, the public work that was assigned to the DPW crews, we are hoping that it will be completed by July one. So the the backlog from last year and into this year, we're hoping that from the old days, when, before we even started construction, we're pretty much done with last last year's work. So that's why I'm very hopeful that with the work that's coming in now and with the private contract, there's still money left uh, in that contract and with the two additional crews, knowing that we have vacation times and things like that, more challenges in the summer, that we'll be able to do that. But the same process has occurred with parcels. Historically, wait by the phone, when it rains, send, send the crew up. We do a great, great job. Well, what have we done? Before, we didn't really know how many potholes we did. The word is we did about 2,000. Now we know, because we count them, and we itemize them. And uh, when the time lapses where people can no longer take action against the city, uh, these are on the list, just like the sidewalk repairs, and that list will go up on our website. We'll explain to the public the work that we've done. Now, you may think that pretty mild here, Went to time that the city did two thousand dollars back in the day. You know, maybe we did six thousand this year. Again, we have two more months left, a month and a half in the fiscal year. Maybe council months. Oh, you know, games crews are pretty good. I think they did eight thousand. And maybe council first. Well, they do real well. That's you know my neighbor. I think they did ten. Well, to date we've done close to eleven thousand five hundred puzzle things, and that's just not answering the phone. To send the engineers out during last winter to realize what's for one and two. One and two we did a couple of years ago. So we realized all those and, and, I, and realized that there's another 4,000 plus photos. So those are in the bank, ready to go when the weather breaks. And a private contract went out and he, he, I think he's pretty much, I think the last week or so, and that's done. So um, whatever can be replicated with other functions of government, <coughs> it's all different. But what's working here is that proactive approach to basically a reactive function. And also you utilizing the private sector not to do our work. Because Paul Delabado will tell you that we can install one main uh, better, efficiently, and less expensive. We just don't have enough labor to get it done but the cost of a private contract with private administration, private engineers, and private work is significantly higher. And, and we've also just started that process. Again, being proactive, utilizing the labor that we have within 1139. So last year we did, I think, uh, Washington Court. Uh, I will tell you this past year, we, we did the cemetery. May one of the cemetery, water main done, our, our folks did. We're hoping if this budget passes, if there's some water main work in here for the first time last year, your folks supported that. I want to get the department into going back when it used to lay water main. Now again, one of the challenges is we have we don't have a whole lot of folks here in the department. 
And if there's a water main break or something, you know, when you're doing a water main, you really have to focus on that main because of the sensitive nature, notion of water quality. You just can't leave that job site. So, uh, so we have to be mindful of that. But uh, there are some smaller streets uh, that we talked to uh, Paul and the general contract or the general foreman about that we we think we'll be able to accomplish uh, some internal water main work, which would be great. Well, since I look forward to and hearing more about that when you present the budget. The other item I wanted to uh, just know is um, will we see a return anytime soon of the Public Works uh, Appreciation Week or the Public Works Week? I think that was another thing that um, you implemented that was fantastic. Uh, you know, there were a couple of functions. One, it, the, I mean, the hardest working folks in city government, the folks in your department, um, and to give them, uh, you know, to have a luncheon for them to honor people who have you know, decades of experience and, and, and service. Uh, I think that was a, a wonderful um, event to appreciate their, their work on behalf of the city. But then also, it also coupled with um, teaching engineering to school kids and getting them excited about, uh, you know, how things work, uh, especially in this, you know, this day and age where there's really um, a big push to try and bring uh, more women into the field of engineering. To, to go into the elementary schools, or like it was the middle schools, I think, go into the middle schools and um, have them participate in contests and really understand what it is that, that the public works department do um, on a daily basis, as well as engineering principles. I think it was fantastic. Um, I would like to see that come back. I'm curious if we will see um, that come back in the future. All right, well, thank you. Appreciate it. <coughs> Mitch, um, before you kind of go into transition, because I, I believe, I see members of your staff here, and I'm assuming that they're all going to kind of be yes. a part of um, what you're presenting here, just in terms of, um, you know, the road work. And I know that that has been, uh, you know, an area of focus, at least for me, um, you know, that I've been advocating for for the last, you know, three or four years, particularly. And I know that um, this is just my opinion. I feel that that. The, the, the best example to a taxpayer of what, how their taxpayer dollars are being spent is when they have a road crew on their street, preparing their street, preparing their sidewalk. And I know that if money was not an object, which obviously it is, I would be able to do you know, a lot more. Um, that has been obviously an appetite. And I have suggested uh, you know, creating or amending uh, the hotel motel tax to, uh, to allow for you know, the um, application monies to be used towards roads. I know the body has supported it. I believe we'll have a public hearing on it on Monday. But that aside, I mean, one of the struggles that I have um, was obviously when you were a ward council in War II, uh, road and sidewalks were very important to you. And um, you know, to, your, to, your, um, you know, to your credit, you had some success with getting the needed infrastructure repaired. Your success becomes my demise, right? Because now, um, <laughs> You know, when I'm out there, you know, working with the administration who's been engaged, you know, with, with me as a ward council, trying to identify where the need is, right? Um, a lot of the streets in Ward 2 that are left to get done actually need a water main replacement as well. So it's not a straightforward um, paving plan. So say, for example, you know, I had some conversation around Ruggles Street. Ruggles Street is in a very rugged condition. Um, but the reality is, the little pool of monies that we had this year, um, you know, I was told, well, we can't use, you know, those monies because <coughs> that needs a lot of water replacement. The same with Child Mon Avenue and Bradford Street. So then they start to look to Summer Street, which I don't think is on the high priority end of the list, but there's you know, it's it's laid out to me that uh, essentially that you're left with the streets that don't need water main replacement. So as I try to wrap my mind around what is the state of the road nation? Like, how do we kind of coordinate the effort as the city begins to hopefully develop more of an attitude towards road repair, where you know we're able to uh, adequately, adequately address those streets that need water main replacement? I don't know the answer. Do you have any thoughts around that? The answer is how the question is. The question is. How do we kind of utilize maybe some of those monies, <coughs> the water mains play to, you know, cover more ground out there in the streets? I mean, 
in Ward 2. If you're left with streets, then you want a main replacement. It doesn't matter if you just have your standard appropriation or roadway. Right? There are some challenges that are not in this budget, but um, my, my hope is that uh, this council will be presented with some proposals that will call for a significant investment in our water mains throughout the city. Um, Paul has a 1927 water main that come out of Maine's Road. Um, so it's just quite 100 years old. So we have about $226 million worth of work to remove pipe just like this. $226 million. If you put us on a 40-year construction plan and do 12,000 million a year, a year, now we do about 8,300 a year over the past couple of years, it would require a $3 million expenditure over a 40-year period and with interest and all. Our consultants have indicated uh, that this seems to be a minor thing. It's a $225 million. Now, what does that do? <coughs> it's bad enough that infrastructure like this has been ignored for a long period of time, that we have tuberculation and use. It's, it's safe, by the way. Nothing wrong with it, but it obviously reduces your capacity which uh, reduces your flow and pressure and all that. Uh, but still, we have an obligation to remove that. And most of these mains now, the pipes are 100 years old. Again, this one was taken out of the Road, and it's a 1927 installation. So even if we vote in this project and complete this project, the last pipe we take out of the ground is going to be about 150 years old. Now, is it logical to say that we're going to have more water main breaks? Yes. And if we don't do anything, they're going to be, what, 200 years old before we finally get to <coughs> So we have a challenge in the water department. So as you notice, in last year's budget, I began to add a water main installation component, and I began to add a roadway restoration component. Small, minor, and out. So that's one way to get to where I think you want to be, uh, Mr. Chairman. But it's not, it doesn't get you to a whole scale review of growth, but it is incrementally one way to do it. However, if the city does adopt some measure <coughs> of a capital improvement plan to improve our water mains, <coughs> consistent with that has to be a significant road management program. Because you dig up a road and you put a water main in, that's a pretty good size trench. So unless as a community, we accept the fact that permanent trenches are not pleasing to look at, but they're safe and are properly constructed and repaired and maintained, uh, but is there a will to do that? My sense is probably not which means that it needs to be a sufficient road component that's comparable to your water main construction. So, unfortunately right now, our road plan <coughs> is somewhat limited to non-water main projects, and our water mains, we are pretty much tied to mass water, which is giving us about a million dollars a year, and you'll see it's not that big of this. Right? And those are periods. Which means we have 120, 140, 150, 170 million <coughs> names. But that's, that's, unfortunately, that's the niche where we're at. And I remind you that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, a chapter 90 money returns uh, about $2 million to the city for roads throughout the city. We have hundreds of miles of roads. Adam Shield alone is $1.5 million. So obviously $2 million a year doesn't really cut it in every neighborhood across the city. So, uh, so 
we do what we can. Uh, we've increased our trench budget, as you know. Uh, we have our engineers going out in the winter time to analyze national grid trenches, and they've done thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars of work, not on the Quincy taxpayer dollar uh, paid for by national grid. So, as a department, we do what we can to fix our potholes, fix our trenches, fix the sidewalks, uh, roads. That's something that obviously that's the purview of the mayor and his council to find the resources to accommodate. We do what we can to maintain what we have, but um, obviously it's a, it's, it's, it's a challenge for us, as, as well as for you folks. Thank you for clearing that up. It is important for the general public to know, just because we have an appropriation for roads, when you're talking about roads and need water manual work, it's a completely different animal, right? And yeah. if we yeah. can't accommodate for the existing mass water money or, or appropriation here. We, we cannot accommodate every road that needs to be repaired that may have a water main work, and we can't fix every road that needs a water main repair problem. So uh, that's just the, the reality of, of that, that's just the fiscal reality. Thank you. Council Kane. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, not everyone knows that, though, right? So sure. not everyone knows that or understands that that's the rationale. So it's one thing to stand up here and say it, say it here, but that message is not going to get out of there. So is there some way that we can start to communicate and do for you know, sidewalk repairs that, hey, this is why your street's not going to get done? Well, again, uh, roads have never been within my purview for council. Uh, that's about my pay grade in a sense. The, the average road is anywhere from three to five hundred thousand uh, dollars We don't select the roads. If someone asks for a road to be in line, we will do that. And we'll provide it to the council, we'll provide it to the mayor, of course. Uh, but uh, there's a process that I assume takes place that ultimately results in us getting uh, the roads that need to be repaired, and we go out and contract and get them repaired. So no, that's, a, that's a great assumption, I guess, that I, I've never heard of any formalized program for the street repair. So, um, you know, that's good. it's up in the air for me. But you talked about China, Chapter 90 and 20. That's a is that a reimbursement program where that money comes to us and we can spend it? It's, it's not a reimbursement. It's, it's money that the state that he gives us. We put in account can be used for public roads, can't be used for private ways. Uh, there's, a, there's a process where our engineers uh, substantiate the roads that are going to be repaired. It gets approved. Money is accessed. And, uh, so it's not a... Uh, it's money second in the state, I believe, from the state gas tax bank. So, in trying to determine how we can better leverage non personal property or tax dollars for larger ticket infrastructure projects like roads and piping, um, would it be possible, Madam Auditor, or anyone just kind of floating this idea, uh, to bond that money if it's kept in a separate account? Can we leverage that? in order to borrow to do more with that little amount that comes in on a yearly basis. I'm sort of confused with question one. I'm hey, sorry, cover the debt service basically, slow it along, but could use that money. Use the chapter 90 yeah. money to cover that? I'm not sure, I wouldn't want to comment on that today. I don't know if there's certain regulations that you have to follow in order to spend the chapter 90 money. Are you closest to this? I, 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 mean, you, I can look into that. I would appreciate it if you could look yes. into that. Because, um, you know, as we're having this discussion, Councilor Cole mentioned, hey, uh, you know, we had this discussion on Monday about uh, hotel motel tax and trying to uh, create other uses for those revenues, in that case, for the channel. And I don't know the answer to that question, and it's very good to find a big one. Obviously, one council needs to approve questions by this municipality and the other municipality about the consistency of the revenue source. And yes. I've been a councilor yes. when that money has yep. not come in. Yep. And I've been a councilor and a resident when that money has been reduced. I got you. Yep. So uh, it's a great idea, something to explore. Uh, if you were born council, would you, if, if this is a 30 year bond, and you were about to indicate that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is going to be committed to $2 million a year. Right. Chapter 90. If 
probably do the left. Yeah. Okay. No, I totally understand, but just trying to get creative in here because uh, it, the infrastructure problem is not going to go away. It's only going to get worse. And there's no way that we can be relying or waiting for federal, state dollars. And as a municipality, we have uh, all the you know power in the world to be coming up with sort of financial policies in order to leverage these dollars. So it, it, it would be my hope yeah. that in the next year's or soon uh, there will be uh, an appropriation for road repairs. It needs it needs to be an appropriation, and, and that's. Supported with Chapter 90, supported on occasion perhaps with the bond issue. So maybe the bond issues could be the major investments. Uh, you could build that new appropriation over a period of time. Some of the, what we're doing with snow and ice. So, you know, methodically, gradually moving up so that uh, no one generation feels the entire uh, kit of, of a significant uh, road repair budget. But, I think the combination of those three things, uh, having the water department doing a little bit more with water mains and maybe a project or two and doing some roads that way, uh, if, if, if that's approved. Uh, maybe expanding some mass water programs, uh, that may be helpful. But again, understanding the needs are also important. So you gave us a number today that 224 million, 226 million, that's huge. I've never heard a number like that before. At least that gives you a place to start and you can work from there to break it down year over year. I have no idea what that means for streets, but you know, if we added that number to 226, we'd probably be in a better position to plan for it in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Council King, I know that the, um, excuse me, the auditor had some um, input on that. Um, just, just going back to the Chapter 90 money, I believe what happens is when, when the money is spent, the city, I believe, has to make a submission into the state, and then we do receive a reimbursement for that. Okay, that's, thank you, that's, that's what I thought, I thought it was a reimbursement. Thank you, Council. Council of Devona. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to start off by saying, Commissioner, you're doing a great job. Thank you for all your hard work. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the sidewalks. Um, there are eight plus out there. They're looking fantastic. Um, just to elaborate a little bit, um, when you do the outside private contracting, is that the cement version of what you put down or what they put down? This particular year, we focused initially on doing our con concrete wash uh, through, through them. Concrete, yep. uh, but that doesn't mean that that's always going to be the case because uh, in the fall, uh, when our DPW crews transition to sweeping, uh, we're going to bring the private contractor back to fill those few weeks. So there's a seamless transition from uh, sidewalk to the end of the year as opposed to that two or three week gap when we go into sweeping and nothing gets done. So, uh, and they'll be doing concrete if the weather permits concrete as well as asphalt. So they'll be doing both. So the concrete, what's the, you know, on the average, how much it costs for the concrete per side across the city? It's like depending on the size, 2000 2500 asphalt, $1,000, 1500 And the asphalt is done in house? For, uh, uh, we have two existing crews right now doing asphalt sidewalks. Uh, every day they're out there doing them. Uh, we have um, uh, those positions uh, uh, in this budget. We have, uh, we have two foremen. Uh, each foreman has a, a sidewalk group. I asked them to select uh, the people that they wanted to work with. Uh, they've done that. So this really is a bottom-up uh, organization, not a top-down. My goal was to get as many sidewalks done as I possibly could, utilizing the talent that we have in the department uh, this construction season. So I brought the two foremen in, uh, both with a uh, tremendous amount of experience, both in the department as well as on the sidewalks. I, I asked them, uh, what position do you need uh, that are more efficient? And this was after uh, we had our engineers uh, overseeing both our private company, different companies do it, and now our folks do it. So we combine the resources of our uh, of our engineer looking at things and the uh, historical uh, operational knowledge of uh, two experienced women uh, to generate a plan that we think is a program for success. And they've been doing a tremendous job. 
our Chapter 90 funding that we had this past year, as well as our $5 million appropriation from the CIP, have we eaten into all that financial funding, I guess, or is it just about yeah, yeah the, 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 the roads that are out there, the board council that I've been working with in the mayor's office, uh, uh, Mr. Walker can probably comment on that more than I, but there may be a little bit of flexibility, but it's nothing substantial to meet the needs of the council for all this If I could, through, through you to, to the mayor's representative, are we, are we pretty much tapped out on, it's not there, um, yeah. what we've appropriated with the CIP, $5 million appropriation, and our Chapter 90 uh, funding is pretty much take care of that was going into April. We do, Mr. Chairman, uh, through Chapter 90 and CIP, uh, we have, we believe to be up to 30 or so streets that are going to be getting done this year. That CIP money from last year, about five million. Uh, those roads were engineered, selected, uh, and that work is getting done in the spring and summer. We anticipate another uh, two million or so uh, and chapter 9 and money that will go out this construction season as well. It's the mayor's intention, as we've discussed, to come back uh, next year's capital plan with another uh, appropriation for roads. Um, and as, as we've talked about, as this council has talked about, uh, other funding sources along the way, when we clear up that snow and ice deficit, that's going to leave us uh, capacity within a new growth and within our free cash, perhaps dedicate some of that money on an annual basis. Uh, and the mayor is uh, considering and open to and has had discussions about uh, appropriations in the budget. Uh, and then, then we talk about CIP when it comes to the sewer and water. Um, we've done a great number of, of water bans in the last several years of the leadership of Commissioner Martin of the Water Sewer Department. We've got a lot more work to do. Um, we have the opportunity uh, to do some through MWRA. Um, we also have some opportunity to do that through the bonding capacity in the, in the water and sewer enterprise fund. You can see in the capital plan, while it's not a specific piece of the appropriations before you currently, uh, there is, uh, within that plan, um, expectations that the number of water mains uh, being done in the city will be increased uh, in the coming years. Thank you, Mr. Walker. I appreciate that. You know, we, we, we're looking outside the pot to try to find more funding and more sources to to tackle the roads, obviously, out there. We're, we're getting a handle, like Council Pumley just said, on the sidewalks. It's just actually tackling the roads with, with more, obviously, vehicles on the road. There's more traffic, so we need to take care of the roads. So I want to thank you, Commissioner, for all your hard work. I, I can see it out there driving around. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.